<laughs> 15 and 13. Well, and 15 is gettable today. <laughs> he's, he's toast. <laughs> <laughs> what I can use that excuse. You're on the you're in the PGA. You're, I, you're going it. on Every it. Is is up or down. Did you hear the music yeah. there, Tim? I did yeah. hear yeah. the intro music. We're, We're live. We are live now. Yeah, We're live. I love it. Ooh. Golf talk at Blacktooth. We brought you a panel of guests today. <laughs> yes, too. I love it. Uh, <laughs> this is the if you're watching on Facebook live, we are in the Blacktooth Brewery tap room here in Sheridan, and I've got let's go through our guests here. I've got Ryan Wagner, golf pro at the Kendrick Golf Course, Ty Bach, owner of the Pony. Bar and Grill, Jess Hattervig of ERA Carroll Realty, Tim Barnes of Blacktooth Brewery, and then Chip, what's your last name? Gibbs. Chip Gibbs. Gibbs. And you've been watching the Masters 28 years straight? 26 with Tim straight, longer Whoa. than that. Okay. Like a okay. Masters historian. Yes. Yeah, okay, awesome. So when something happens, we'll ask, we'll ask Chip down there. No, no, t- Tim's a real Masters historian. <laughs> not accurate. He was Tim pre-Blacktooth. He's not just here for the free beer like the rest of us. <laughs> hey, we're going to your place for wing shortly. Yeah, yes. there get we go. Get I love them hot, this. Get them ready. We're headed there <laughs> afterwards. Traveling a traveling show here. I like it. This is great stuff. You can drink beer and do a podcast. You cannot eat wings and podcast at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook Live is schmutz. <laughs> the, the hat looks good though. <laughs> So guys, thanks for coming down. We're just we're watching the Masters, obviously. So if something happens, I can't see it. So you guys tell me, and I don't know anything about golf anyway. So you just <laughs> you guys just tell me if something crazy happens. Um, I should ask this. I don't even know who's winning right now. Like who's in the lead? Justin Rose is seven under. Shot sixty five yesterday. Even part of day. Guys are chasing him. Two back, three okay. back. Um, Will J- Zalatoris might be the story of today because the guy had no status on any pro tour last year at this time. A year ago, had no status on any pro tour, then one on the Corn Ferry Tour, and then one on the PGA Tour. And a year later, now he's second in the Masters Whoa. after day two and was not a professional on any tour last year. Wow. One year. That's crazy. Yeah. Solid run. Crazy. We're pulling for him. Yeah, We're so pulling he's, for he's guys this, like that. Yeah, the Cinderella story. Yeah, I love Closest it. Closest thing to an amateur. The Bobby Jones would love it. Oh, he'd be all in on Will Zalatoris. Um, well, Bobby Jones was the creator of the Masters. Golf course was built by Bobby Jones and a guy named Alistair McKenzie uh, in Augusta, Georgia. He was a big amateur, as, as most folks would know. Uh, probably the greatest amateur. And that there's a young guy who's 150 pounds soaking wet is actually in contention after just barely gaining status as a professional. It's a pretty cool story. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, then, and he's not in anybody's pool, so everybody can root <laughs> for yeah, him. Yeah, nobody's got that dude. <laughs> Why don't we just pass that sports book, right? Well, next year we can bet on the long shot. It, we're all in next year. Yeah. Next yeah. year this will be a Masters betting podcast. Love it. Yes. <laughs> yep. Brought to you by Gobi Wyo and Blacktooth and the Pony Bar and Grill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there we go. And ERA. And ERA. And ERA Carol Realty. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. No, I'm all down about that. Yeah. Yep. No, I think, was it the sports book or was it just online betting? I think it's online betting. Oh, because the online betting is actually kind of a downer because it's like <laughs> Wyoming's just taking their cut and it's like 20K a year. So it's like... <laughs> Whoop de doo! Like, yeah, good yeah, job. It's a, step. it's a step. Stepping stone. You're saying next year is so we should be lobbying for the sports book from a couple next of guys who own 21 and over establishments. <laughs> yes, having a sports book is a good move yeah. in the right direction. You yes. gotta have a lot of cash on hand if somebody wins, but yep, it's right. A, it's a move in the right yeah. direction. That'd be cool. <laughs> They're yeah, have to go far. They did. They did approve it in South Dakota. Yep. Sportsbook <laughs> effective this summer. Deadwood. Deadwood. Deadwood's, Deadwood's been ready for that for a long time, though, <laughs> which is great. Yep. 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 What other stories right now that we can think of? A lot Brian of big guys Hunt. missing the cut. Big guys. Yeah. Uh, McElroy. Uh, Kepka. Rory's not out yet. Kepka. He's not out yet. Rory's plus seven with five to play. He's got to get four in there. Two par fives. Could happen. Oh. Be a hell of a move. Bye-bye, Rory. But I think Rory's <laughs> looking at it. Not a lot of faith here. Yeah. No faith in Rory. He's yeah. got nothing today. I don't know where Phil is. He was he plus was four. Cut line. I think he missed He missed his birdie on 18 to go to plus three. Yeah. So he's on the cut line. Yeah. See, these are all names I know, so I'm like, oh, man. Like, this is... Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of the... 
rite of passage, the coming of spring this year in 2021, different animal than, than years past based on what we've all seen and been through over the last 12 months. It feels like the Masters this year has a, a deeper meaning and, a, and a more excitement than normal just because it's an opportunity to see the coming of summer and the Kendrick, Kendrick golf course is coming back into the mix. And yeah. it's just a, it feels really good to be somewhat normal in Blacktooth. I think Ty would resonate that the pony feels normal. Things around us are starting to feel like they typically did. And uh, the yeah. Masters is kind of the, the welcoming of that excitement and activity of cool. summer. Yeah, yeah. I know it is for me personally, this is Tim's point. Like, when I'm watching this, it's summer's here. Yep. It's, it's we're back. Season's ready. Let's back to normal. Go. Yep. And obviously, last year was. Everything yeah. was backwards, but seeing this, let's get going. Yeah. For us here in Wyoming, last year when they're playing this in November, you're like, oh, we can't go play today. I mean, that's why I've <laughs> been coming to visit Tim for 26 years on the Masters. <laughs> There's been a few years when the weather was so bad they probably couldn't play, but right. they played anyway, I think. Yeah. We have played in snow. <laughs> we have played in November. rain. The, one of the very first ones, probably like the, I don't know, fifth or sixth time, Ryan went out with us, one of the original powder horn rounds we played and chip was on stag three and he was just over the bunker there and he said to jimmy he said he said what is it to the green and jimmy scott looked back at him and said it's a bad decision <laughs> he said okay i'll hit seven iron out of here <laughs> that's awesome well ryan talk a little bit about how kendrick feels about kind of we're back to normal you know and um, a new start new summer yeah, yeah. Uh, out of Kendrick, we've got a uh, got a new start. We've got an all new staff, uh, top to bottom, all the way from the. Uh, I took over the management of the club uh, from a golf operation side, and uh, we have a new golf course superintendent. Name is uh, Chris Kramer. He's a local kid. Went to high school here. Uh, just a great dude. Uh, got his degree in Rutgers. Uh, totally qualified, and the golf course uh, is just going to get better under Chris. It's it's in great shape. We had a great winter. The, when we had a cold streak uh, that below zero stretch, we had a snow cover. So all the golf course, all the golf courses in Sheridan survived the winter in good. I don't think there's any winter kill. Um, awesome. In the clubhouse, we remodeled uh, inside Kendrick. So the, the city was gracious enough. They're gonna they're putting uh, they put new carpet in. Uh, they're doing some work on the outside of the building. So the outside of the building is gonna change. Inside, we added a bar uh, and food service will begin again this year kind of beginning in may we're going to have some uh, well breakfast and lunch uh, just kind of have our basic operations get the golf course back to a to a nice steady golf operation yeah love it i went to school with chris so yeah he he was a great golfer in high school and uh that's awesome i didn't know he was the superintendent so that's pretty cool just picked him up this spring that's yeah, awesome. it worked out really good yeah He's awesome great dude they they sprayed down the walls they put up new paint new pro shop decor looks good up there awesome um, I was, again rite of passage springtime we're back in the groove at Kendrick yeah I was up there the other day seeing some balls ran into Justin who's also uh, working for Chris or Chris and yes it was just so fresh to hear them talking about and hearing the excitement in their voice of getting the course in shape and having someone there that was actually you could feel in their voice that it was a priority and a challenge and something they wanted to be right. Yeah, the, the, the Powderhorn, uh, Justin Bishop, who was our superintendent the last two years, uh, went to work at the Powderhorn, and the Powderhorn has come over, and, and Justin and Jason Bush have come over and said, hey, we're gonna, we want to help you. You've got great momentum. The golf course is in great shape. We want to help you make it better. And, uh, and the, so the Powderhorn has come over, and they're giving us a, a consulting. They're help, helping us out with a consulting part. Yeah. Uh, with a, Just helping us make it even better than it is today and trying to help make Sheridan golf even better than it is yeah. uh, than it is now and, and I'd like to th on here like thank you with the Powderhorn and and the city of Sheridan is the one that made the commitment to uh, to Kendrick and to make it better there was a point in time where we were struggling with the condition of the golf course uh, but that is no longer the, the last two years the commitment to the equipment commitment to the staffing uh, Kendrick is in as good a shape as it's been in I don't know, maybe ever. Yeah. It's just really in great that's, great place. As soon as we're done here, we're gonna yeah. do a chip off at the at the practice green at Kendrick. 
Right. No. <laughs> no. I was gonna say we're going to the pony for wings. Yeah. I, I, like, yeah. I like Ryan and I's chances to win that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got a little bit of handicap. Let's go thirty yards back. <laughs> What's new at Gobi, Wyoming? I mean, a little oh, bit about us, but. Yeah, so the last time I was here, Tim, we, we weren't in our studio yet. Um, so now we've got a full studio there in the new Market Hall building. Um, we've had some some great guests already come through. Um, our latest ones was a, a local local group, the Provision Fund with Casey Osborne. Great, great um, guys, doing and, great stuff. Yeah, um, you know, we, we actually just kind of, a, as a spoiler, we interviewed uh, Shayla Connor, the Sheridan Wild Rodeo Queen. So that'll be coming out in a couple weeks. Um, I'm, we're just hitting them all like so provision fund to the rodeo um, Sher- Sheridan Pilots Association um, you know we're covering it all and so we're growing here in Sheridan and we're we're starting to uh, hopefully this helps too a little bit like you know Buffalo Dayton Ranchester but Casper Gillette and uh, just grow statewide uh, you know Zach and I always cover the the state stuff but uh, um, you know, gotta start with the local stuff first, and then get that that name out there and, sure. and keep going. So, yeah, a lot of great stuff going on. We're we're booked out uh, guest wise this month, which is crazy to me. Um, you know, there was a time where I was like just calling anybody I could think of, like, "Hey, come on my show." That's when that's that's when he approached me. Or, hey, can we get into Black Tooth and yep. maybe interview? Yeah, <laughs> I got nowhere else to go in this thing. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm running out of ideas. Help me out. So, but yeah, no, it's, it's encouraging and it's great. And, uh, you know, uh, it, yours is probably still, I don't understand. I just filmed the video on my phone and people watch it on YouTube. And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't know how that works, but that's probably just the, the atmosphere. We were, here. we were a little loose. Yeah. It was free, fresh. Zach's coming too. So Bozeman Bobcats so, at some point when he gets out whoa, of school. Whoa, hey, but the, the guy next to you is also a Bobcat. Yeah, there we As go. As is the guy over here. Oh, look at that. We got a lot of Bobcats. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us went so, to the Harvard of the West. And, yeah. and Ryan, even though you didn't go there, was is also a Bobcat. My mom was a barrel racing national champion out of Montana State. There oh, wow. Go. See, yeah. he doesn't yeah. cheer for the Grizzlies. So No, actually, at Kendrick, we charge the Grizzlies an extra $10 <laughs> per round yes. at Kendrick. I like that little name drop with your mom. Hey, hey. How, many, how many guys have a mom who's a national barrel racing yeah. team? Yeah. How many yeah. got a, that's my tie to Montana State. <laughs> there you go. The old brick breeding field house. That's awesome. That's and, right. and, 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 and she was a winner because she went to Montana State. <laughs> Boom. So there you go. It's just the, no doubt. <laughs> Nobody likes the Grizzlies. I was let's gonna just, say, let's just get it out there. <laughs> can we just bash the Grizzlies? Can this just be a bash the Grizzlies podcast? Yeah. Like, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't know what, what our reach is into Montana, but we're gonna lose the. <laughs> we just lost the West. The, yeah, the West rest. West. Yeah. I think I said on the previous podcast, I wouldn't cheer for the Grizzlies if they were playing Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a shattering state guy, so it's, I don't know. <laughs> in, uh, uh, 26 years of, of Tim and I watching the Masters together, and, and 26 years of him stealing my material because that was <laughs> that was mine. So oh, okay, well, oh. if we go back, there was a conversation when I first started at ABC Rental, which the illustrious ABC Rental in Bozeman, Montana. Those of you who were there probably rented inner tubes from there. I had <laughs> I said I'm the Duke, and suddenly. This guy became the Duke, and I was I was somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and this guy came up to me and says, hey, do you know the Duke? And I go, what? And he says, yeah, you know Chip Gibbs. And I went, oh. So speaking of, speaking of stealing material, there's been a lot of it stolen a lot of different directions. I'm kind of waiting for Chip's reply. I feel like this is a... Oh, no, I, I, I flat out stole oh, okay. it and made, and made it happen. I, Just admit it. I, it worked. I, it worked. I, I did. I still have guys in Bozeman who, who see me and say, hey, Duke, Duke, how you doing? So <laughs> it's it stuck. That's fantastic. That's an awesome Ooh, nickname. The does Duke. It, does anyone else have a nickname that can compare to that? Well, John Wayne was the original Duke. Yeah. Yeah. I don't recall what what we were speaking of when the Duke came I, out. But. I, I don't either. It's uh, it's <laughs> You were saying, oh, I'm the Duke at this or I'm the Duke at that. He was uh, showing some humility there. And I, <laughs> I liked it. So I stole it because we have that in common. It's awesome. <laughs> You don't get to laugh at that, right? Jason Day. I'm laughing. Jason Day. Gone. <laughs> Plus nine. Plus nine. Another, gone. Another Curtains for day. Jason Day. Yeah. There There we go. There's a cut line. Plus three. Poulter makes it. Kuchar gone. Brooks gone. Lee Westwood gone. Is that Brooks Kepka? Cantillay gone. Yep. 
Oh, wow. I had a lot of those guys in my uh, office pool. Gone. So, I, I think I might so be So Ryan Wagner, <laughs> gone. gone. Yeah, and gone. out. Gone. gone. I'm a, I guess, hopefully I run a better golf operation than I do pick professional <laughs> golfers. You got ponies to pick here pretty soon, right? Kentucky Three weeks for ponies? Oh, yeah. cannot wait for the, for the ponies. Is that another live stream we're doing, Tim? Sure. <laughs> oh, I don't know. If we, got, if we got a collective group here to do this, this could be <laughs> oh. next time ty's bringing wings yes can you bring like a new listing I mean, I'll, hey a couple new listings, derby derby listing? no, no, I'm, you some some real some horse properties for the derby <laughs> <Exactly>. some horse <laughs> properties for the derby yeah. bring me some horse property we'll and talk or you could, and... you could just be here to have free wings and beer which seems like a pretty nice gig <laughs> i'm more interested in the wings <laughs> yeah the wings i'm down <laughs> yeah. in fact why don't you can probably get some today. yeah can we order some is that <laughs> i got a phone right here What's yeah that? <laughs> round, that's the official yeah. I'll put, here one time. We did do those. Here, and and mint juleps. Did we have mint juleps yes. one time? Yeah. Yes. Some great bourbon. Mm. There's some. There's some great horse horse history out here in this area for the Kentucky Derby horse oh, racing. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be. When is that? Uh, May fifth, first Saturday in May. Oh, go be wild is here. If there's wings here, <laughs> go be wild can be here. If Ty can be here. Yes. Ryan and I are yeah. not going to make that. We will. Uh, we will be predisposed at that moment. <laughs> predisposed. We get For, we get the opportunity to play some nice golf courses. We're headed out east to play oh, some. Oh, okay. Play some nice golf. Fair oh. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. What's new at the Pony? We gotta get yeah, a yeah. little bit of it. I mean, you got a new hot tub. I heard well, there's a new hot tub at the at the Bach <laughs> household. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> correct, but but do we get it wired up? Is it functional? Yeah. <laughs> We're almost there. Okay. The weather, I, the weather cut and set up a little short. Yesterday at lunch, I knew you weren't going to get that done today. What <laughs> meteorologist parts? You're going to be putting that, setting that hot tub in the blizzard. Correct. Knew it. Anyway, knew it. The pony. Speaking of hot. Summer's coming. No, we are not keeping the deck and clothes over summer. I think every day that's the case. Yes. Are, are you going to yes. take this down? Yes. Absolutely, we're taking that down. It would be like a sweat lodge. The there. patio <laughs> mask is coming off. That, the COVID yes. plastic is coming down. Uh, absolutely, it's been fantastic for us. Even like right now, the early spring wilding. So I've been telling people we're probably going to leave it up until that Memorial Day time. I mean, we've got the speakers coming up and shared and stickers kept Mother's Day weekend. Historically, like nine times out of ten, it's 40 degrees and raining sideways. Yep. Uh, so when I've got a whole bunch of soccer players in town, it'd be great to have the extra seating. Uh, it's been well received. Uh, historically, the pony's always been, the deck's been that seasonal draw. Hey, it's springtime, the Masters is on. It's that same kind of talk, like, hey, we can go golf, we can hit the pony deck now. Uh, very fortunately for us, we've been busy enough year round now. It's nice to have that extra seating all the time. So, moving forward, we've been cover from COVID down year. We're looking at a way to be, be make the deck more permanently open one day and close the next. Um, what we put up now is not feasible to take down, put up, take down, put up. Uh, just the way it was designed, it was just we got to get something up yeah. to make this happen now. Um, as in a lot of businesses reacted immediately and did what they needed to do to exist in COVID. Um, but we definitely see the, the need, and it actually is a different ambiance and cool with all that lighting and sitting out there while it's snowing was really kind of cool. Um, yeah. And other than the really cold snap, we're able to use it almost the whole winter. So. Uh, Summer's back. We're excited for, sounds like Wild Rodeo is going to happen again. That's always a big thing at the Pony. We'll have our Thursday and Friday night concerts. Who do you guys have headlining for those? Uh, Thursday night, we're keeping it local. We're going to have Rick Dyson this year. Okay, great. Uh, Friday night, we're bringing back Fancy Williams again. Heck yeah. Uh, this has been uh, the last yep. four, four years now. It's been a big hit, so... Uh, we actually talked about working with Tim. I, we still might have something to watch for the next night. Yep, still, still grinding. Still no, grinding. no announcement to make, no but <laughs> stay tuned. TBD. It. Yeah, <laughs> one of the biggest things that that Ty faces with that concert is the the price of bringing in the stage and all the sound. And if you could make it 
two nights instead of one, you could figure out how to, you know, cut some of those costs because a lot of it's mobilization and setup. And yep. if we could get that stage to move from Ty's location somewhere close to here, we could figure out a way to make that a little more beneficial for everybody. Yeah. So yeah. But there's a lot of commitment. Like if Tim and I have a class down yeah, here, it's, okay. it's black too. We're responsible for every aspect. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not a, we're our own entity. So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. A lot of pieces got to be put in place. You leaving? No. Oh. Right oh. <laughs> oh, good. He left the mic. That'd have been funny. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been Coming better. Coming at you live, yeah. Jess from the restaurant. Yeah, Jess. Yeah, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> would have been a first for the podcast. Yeah, that'd have been funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> any, uh, any, uh, metal people out there i think ty's saying hey if you can come up with an idea to open the deck close the deck yeah you're open to <laughs> open to suggestions as as bids, welcome. yes yeah yeah all, all bids are welcome <laughs> yes is accepted yes all bids are welcome yeah keep it reasonable not <laughs> also there's always the, uh, the push for you need a second level on the deck sure yo sure. I, we get it all the time are you gonna do a rooftop patio like there's six days a year when that makes sense. <laughs> Maybe eight. You got to staff it and send beer up there. I mean, have you ever hauled beer upstairs? Our not easy. Big enough. Actually, it's not big enough to supply food to the seating we have now. Adding more seating, I always tell people like, you should expand. You should move to Buffalo or. <laughs> I'm leaving the second location for tap room. It's a tent. It's funny. I keep hearing the same thing, and yet I'm not smart enough to go. Yeah, you, Buffalo sounds crazy. <laughs> or Casper, for that matter. Sounds crazy. I put tap rooms 320 miles apart. I, I tell people, like, if we're expanding, it's going to be on the back end because we yep. don't have the room to pump out. Yep, yep. I've even had chefs from other places come in. Tim Rockwell, when he was going to call it, walked back to my kitchen and went, are you kidding me? He's, like, looking around. He's, like... How do you even put out the food that you do out of this tiny little space? Your kitchen's the size of a golf cart. Yeah, I mean, our <laughs> kitchen was essentially a liquor storage room back in the day when the money was just a liquor storage. It was like, hey, listen. You kitchen. didn't take that in the restroom with you? It wasn't designed to be no. a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I was also on the phone. Oh. I had to cut out there. But he got a he got a new listing. Yeah, we got a new <laughs> he got a new listing. We got that we haven't discussed that yet, Aaron. We wanted to hear that negotiation. Oh, I apologize, but I got to deal with that. That was something that had to be dealt with before five. So we're on time on Friday. Yeah, we we're, we're swinging big deals here. Yeah. The podcast. He, he had to stop and call about horse property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to get this figured out for, for May. Three weeks from yeah, now. you got three weeks till uh, yeah. Derby Day. Talk about pressure. I think most of the ponies around here are polo. <laughs> yes. It's not racetrack. Yes. Yep. Yep. But yep. that doesn't make any less difference on the price on the horse property. No. It's it still. <laughs> it does not. Built for steam. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about new, Ryan, what is what are some new things that people should expect from the Kendrick Golf Course this year? So this year we we've rolled out a couple leagues. Actually. Okay, uh, we've got a uh, the women's league this year uh, is going to go. Um, they're going to play all day. You can join the Kendrick Ladies Golf Association, and you can play at any time all day. And they'll have a couple day games. Uh, they've had that in the past, but but involved with that also is we're going to have one night a one night every month we'll have a 5:30 shotgun where all the ladies get together at the same time uh we'll have wine tastings beer tastings things like that on the golf course for the ladies during that ladies night so it's not just going to be golf it's really more about social than it is about the golf uh along with that by the way just interrupt the in the water we got a guy who's remarking his ball on 13 who's plus two his name's dustin johnson and defending uh -oh. champion just uh -oh. rolled back into race creek oh that's the pawn of 15 actually. oh and the cut is. is plus three he is gonna be <laughs> on the line he's right at it uh -oh. i didn't mean to wreck you there but no you didn't we, that's big news. That's 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 news. News. right in the agua the number one player in the world is on <laughs> the edge of not making this deal God. Defending champ, right? Defending, Defending champ, champ and number one player in the world just winning the water on, is it 13 or 15? That's, that's uh, 15. Was that 15? 15. Yeah, Ooh, 15. Late in his round, too. Exactly. He's going to have to hit this one close to try and stay on the cut line. All right. So See Men's the drama that unfolds yes, at Augusta yeah. National on a Friday? <laughs> oh, love it. Well, so we got Men's League coming out also Thursday on Wednesday nights. Okay. Uh, Five thirty shotgun. Everybody plays two man teams. We just rolled that out yesterday. Nice. Uh, so if you're interested in men's league and you want to play on Wednesday nights, 
just call the course. Um, uh, we'll get you set up. We have a partner. We just need your name and your partner's name. And both of you need to have a handicap. And that's it. You can be a member of any club anywhere in Sheridan, Buffalo. Doesn't matter. It's, it's open for everybody. Uh, we're taking the first 24 teams. And then after that, we'll take the next eight uh, for flights. And it'll be a two-man team, and you'll play a match play for the next eight weeks. It'll and, end the week before rodeo. And that's the every Wednesday? Every Wednesday night, 5.30 shotgun. We get let everybody get off of work. And we'll leave you a half an hour to get from work into the uh, roll into the golf course, grab a six pack of black tooth and go play. Awesome. <laughs> well done. There you go. I, I tried to talk him into having like a club chucking league or a, like a contest where yeah. we, could throw the <laughs> chucker. we could throw the chucker. Yep. <laughs> we might still institute that as the uh, tiebreaker. If we have a tie, <laughs> Not we won't a have a chip off. off. We're going to have a chucker. <laughs> I love, I love it. Who can chuck a nine iron the farthest? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yep, yep. You could get like a rotation. Somebody could try and count the number of turns. Oh, I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's how you really get them out there. Yep. You got you to gotta get a lot of rotation and centrifugal force to get yep. a really good chuck. We have a friend of ours that probably is the best chucker that we He's know. incredible. I, we call him the chucker. <laughs> we, that dude can incredible. throw it 100. But he cuts yards. it loose. It's just, it's you got to get it. You got to get rid of it at the right time. Like you can't go it too early or too late. Late. Yep. Are we going to bail on him? Are we going to drag him out on this podcast and actually name this individual? <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's what I was gonna... just about to ask. <laughs> he, he knows who he is. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Capsary, <laughs> you know who you are. Oh, just, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Oh. <laughs> it's, it, it's just you got to know when to cut it loose. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's like NASCAR drivers know when to make the pass and there's 200 miles an hour and they're right next to each other and you, you got to squeeze it in there. Well, when you cut it loose with the with the wedge and you you never throw the driver or the three no. iron because you kind of expect some of those are going to be bad. But when you got a wedge in your hand and it doesn't go well, it's disappointing and disheartening <laughs> and you got to know when to cut it loose. And, and Matt's got a, a real air about him. L- little, yeah, <laughs> the drivers are too light. You know, they got that, they got, they're too light. You got to get a good wedge because that's where you get the distance. They got the weight. Putters are heavy. They're getting too expensive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Putter gets expensive. Yeah. He's also a grizzly. That's probably oh, he's more of a like. Ooh, see, there's a time talking, when you can chuck. talking about bobcat and grizzlies. Here's a uh, the co-host Zach Gale. There's a time hey. when you can chuck, and there's a time when you can. And one of the things you can't chuck with is when it's you're a grizzly. Then it's character. just yeah. bad form, <laughs> bad character. Yes. it's a character flaw. Yeah. Nobody's oh. surprised when a grizzly <laughs> chucks. <No. laughs> yeah, yeah, get a beer. We got to get Zach a beer. Yeah. Yep. He's a bobcat guy. A get beer a beer a, first. A, a beer and a microphone. <laughs> yep. Beer and a microphone. It's like a chip in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just add to this because I've been, I've been a member up at Kendrick for, shoot, I don't know, 15 years. Yeah. And I love Christ was a corporal. Um, but I'm super excited what these guys are doing. I've been out there a few times in the last two weeks and, um, different attitude, different vibe, positive. The clubhouse looks great. Horse looks great. Um, I will say this, Justin, for his safety, should probably leave. Uh, I might have hit him in a golf ball the other day when he was messing with a sprinkler on the 16 tee box. Tee shot on 15 might have went a little errant. But uh, no, in all seriousness, I'm super excited, and these guys are kicking ass, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun summer. Yeah. You know, talking about Justin being on the course, the best compliment I heard about your staff that you have on the course now is someone said, someone on the golf course superintendent side actually came up to me and talked to me and said, what do you think about the course? How is it playing? What's going on? So there's that now that connection with the community and the course, not just we're a course come give us your money and get that out of here it's how do we make it how do we make our relationship better for people? someone walked up and said hey we know how to get rid of weeds yeah. we're not going to have dandelions in the greens yeah, or the tea boxes we understand turf yes now they're yeah. Kendrick 
municipal golf course is poised for great things over the next five to seven years yeah. because it had been on a really poor track the other direction for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. But, well, and with um, the golf, the comeback of golf with COVID, look at the good things that COVID's done. And one of them is bringing golf back. Yes. I mean, golf courses were dying all over the country. I mean, I was on the yes. board at a golf course and we couldn't get members. And, and uh, so now if you're going to have members come back or new members join and you're on the upswing, it, it couldn't be better for you. And that's awesome, Ryan. I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah, no, we, we've, uh, we're riding the wave nationally of golf. Uh, golf was a great, you know, COVID, the one great thing was it was great for golf. People got to play outside, you were spaced away. But what people realized when they got out there was that they really do like the game. They, they, they enjoy the challenge. It's, you know, it's not a game that you ever finish the round and go, man, I played perfect. Right. You don't ever do that. And so you can always get better and you can enjoy it. If you don't play well, you can still enjoy it. You can still uh, enjoy the good friendships. Uh, for me, um, I have another business and I, and I took on the Kendrick deal just because golf is a passion. And I enjoy uh, I enjoy the game and the, the things that golf has given me, the relationships. I mean, I know all of you from the game of golf almost almost exclusively i know you from golf and, and that goes with a, a lot of people that i've met and tim and i are getting uh, lucky enough to play some great golf courses on the east coast and it's because of golf because of who we met we're getting to play one of the top clubs in the, in the entire world because of who we know and who we met playing golf i met my wife on the golf course uh i've got i got into the current business that i'm in because of golf and i I want other people to enjoy and, and experience the things that that golf has given me. And hopefully people are experiencing the same thing well, on the golf course. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's what for Tim and I's friendship was playing golf after work. Uh, when Bridger Creek opened up and he found out he was a golfer and uh, still has not anyone a fan. played Bridger Creek? St still not uh, a fan. Still not like a fan. The front nine is yeah. like having nine upside down bathtubs to putt to. Yeah. <laughs> it's still not my favorite There's place. Just to play know golf. where to land it or stop it. But, but that's where we we started hanging out was on the golf course and just like you said, I mean, I met you through Tim because we got to be friends golf. with golf. We played in some tournaments and met a lot, a lot of wonderful people in Sheridan by coming over here to watch to watch golf. Yeah. So it's and and you know the best thing about it to me is what what you said earlier. It's elaborated, but you play the same course a hundred times and you never play it the same a hundred times. It's not it's not like a bowling alley. It's the, you know same it's, lane, it's same, same lane. Ex exactly. I mean it's 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 different every time you go play, and uh, that's what makes it you know so much fun. At least for me. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, the other great thing about golf is myself as uh, my handicapper at the table. <laughs> I can right. say, one, I've never said I couldn't play any better, but I definitely thought I, I absolutely could not have played any worse than I just <laughs> Hey, <laughs> but I got a great I got a great tie box story here. We play league at, at Buffalo <laughs> routinely during the summer and we're on number twelve and Ty takes a twelve, right? Yeah. On week one, just yeah. to speak to your point, or week two. And then the following week he makes birdie and three hundred and fifty dollars in the skin. <laughs> same hole, same tee shot. Yep. We didn't hit. We didn't throw three out of bounds that day. We stuffed it down there. We chipped it close. We hammered it in. Three hundred fifty-four dollars. Skin only skin of the day, Ryan. But that's what makes Woo. you keep coming back. It doesn't matter your skill level. It's always a fun challenge. It's good times with friends. It's stories you'll have forever. Yes. Uh, I made sixty birdies in league, and I didn't win a skin. Not one time. Not one. That's what you get for being today. <laughs> yeah. You're too good, Tim. No. Too good. That's that's not true. <laughs> as far as the bathtubs goes, if you just put every wedge left and never hit a green, you don't have to worry about you it. Know. You put up the bathtub every time. <laughs> Straight up hill. I do love Bridger Creek, though, man. It'll always have a special yeah, you have place. Greeny bogeys. <laughs> <laughs> What else, what do we got, Zach? What are you? Yeah, you're coming in late. You just rolled I know, in. I know. Yeah, I got, you are got out of surrounded school. by Bobcats. Yeah, so things are good. Things are good. Yeah, we, it's, we, it's a reunion. We we learned earlier that uh, Ryan's mom was a national champion barrel racer at Montana State University. Really? Okay. Chips a Montana State University grad. There we go. Ty, myself, we got. There no, we no, are. <laughs> this is a yeah. grizzly free zone. Good. Well, that's not, the way we like I'm it. I'm not a grizzly. Hey, yeah. 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 we can say that. That's that's. 
Right. Nope. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something. I mean, that's seriously. I mean, yeah. that's something. Yeah. Not even anywhere, yeah, that's right. something. <laughs> you're not. If you're not a Grizz, you're a step ahead. If Good I'm nothing, you. I will always not be a Grizz. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> no matter how bad it gets, no matter how low I go, yeah. I will still not be a Grizz. <laughs> one step above that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's I was, awesome. I was playing in a golf tournament in uh, Cody a couple years ago and I was telling this this woman I was seeing and she doesn't get the the animosity because she went to the University of Wyoming and there's no in-state rival right. and uh, um, sat down after tournament and this gentleman had a Grizz shirt on and I had a Bobcat shirt on and I said oh you're a Grizz and he said yeah and, and the thing about Grizz fans is I, I don't know very many who ever went to college there they just root for the football team right but all the Bobcats I know went to school there at least at some time so I asked this guy if he went to the University of Montana and he said, yes. I said, well, did you graduate? And he said, yes. And I looked over and I said, this is like finding a unicorn. <laughs> this guy is actually a Grizz fan and he went to school there. I said, yes, this doesn't happen. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And, and, and uh, uh, Aaron's right, you know, the Western Montana will never listen to this podcast again. <laughs> You'll have well, a tough time. Northwestern from, uh, Montana. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask how uh, how can a beginner join at Kendrick? You know, people who are maybe you know they've maybe stepped away from golf or they want to come back or trying to get their kids involved to play golf. What what kind of things does Kendrick offer? Sure, we got uh, from the lesson side. With um, we have a great uh, head golf professional out there. His name is Nathan Farrell. Uh, came over from Driggs, Idaho. Uh, he's he's one of the best players, if not the best player in the area. Uh, the guys go going to play in the National Club Pro Championship, the PGA National Club Pro Championship. Okay. Uh, the top 12 from that tournament get to play in the in the PGA Championship with the tour players. Okay. So he's playing in the, he's qualified through uh, Montana, can, Wyoming. Can we get him on our prime team? We, we will, but we're not going to talk about that on the podcast. <laughs> I don't want to give him up. He's not available for pro-amps. He's okay. taken. Okay, good. He's <laughs> trying to help our cause here. <laughs> no, no, so he's a, a really, really good player. Player, but he's a really good teacher and a really good guy outside of that. So if you're if you're looking to play, looking to learn how to uh, play the game, Nathan's a great guy. All you got to do is uh, just call the shop, um, and he'll schedule a lesson. He'll do group lessons if you're if you're more comfortable in a group atmosphere with a couple of your friends. Uh, and and for beginners, a lot of times that's the best way to learn because you kind of laugh and play with your friends and right, yeah. hit bad shots and you can laugh at each other. Uh, and he'll he'll do the group lesson uh, from the junior side we have uh, we have a Sheridan Junior Golf Association which is throughout uh, Sheridan yeah. uh, we allow we have we take in all kids um, it's 99 bucks for a four week session starts on June 7th uh, we have a website Sheridan Junior Golf uh, Association uh, and we do uh, two sessions we have a Monday Thursday session that's out at the Paderhorn and we have a Tuesday Wednesday session that's at Kendrick and we we uh, We'll we'll take the kids. It's a one and a half hour session. We'll teach you driving, chipping, putting. Uh, we get you started uh, learning the game uh, that way. And then the second level, after you've learned the basics in junior golf, then we have a PGA Junior League. And so we're taking about 20 kids, 20 kids at the Powderhorn and 20 kids at Kendrick. Okay. And it's, it's a team game. Uh, they play a scramble together and the kids learn to be compet play competitive golf. Sure. Uh, they learn how to mark their ball. They learn etiquette. They learn sportsmanship. They learn uh, all the great things that, that golf has to offer from a character standpoint. Yeah. And, and they learn it as a group. So it's not intimidating as an, you know, you don't have to play your ball the whole time. You're playing a scramble. So you, you all hit out there and you put, take the best ball. Uh, great format for kids and great format for them to learn. 
learn how to play a little competitive golf. Sure. When we have a lot of the tournaments that, that we all play in, uh, we all we play in a lot of scrambles, a lot of best ball partner partner golf. Uh-huh. Actually, it's probably the the most fun tournaments that we play in are partner golf tournaments, and and so we're getting the kids introduced to that golf at, at an early age, sure. so they can learn how to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Is this an appropriate time to mention the junior program that we have too? Um, the powder, the black powders sponsored. And did I miss that? Which one? With the the junior program that's been going for the last four. Five Sheridan years. Junior Golf. Yeah. Yep. I just just covered that. Yeah, excellent. Great. I was talking to Jess. <laughs> Monday, to Thursdays at the Powderhorn. My apologies. Tuesday, Wednesday. The, I was I, just, I was working on my priorities. You you did well. <laughs> I, Keep doing what you do. I have yeah, never well. missed a round of beers. <laughs> <laughs> like, we need another one over here. <laughs> I was talking about sixteen. To yes. Come. Yes. Yeah. So a little yeah. repetition there. My fault. No. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's all good. I'll hit it again. Yeah. <laughs> where are we with DJ? Did anybody see where DJ is? DJ he- hit it to about 12 feet on 16, and then he didn't hit it 13 feet, and it rolled to like oh, 45 no. feet. Oh, oh, no. So I think DJ like, might be looking at uh, oh, no. flights flights out of Augusta this evening. Well, and on I, wheels I up. I don't know if he made his putt on 15 or not. I don't, I was watching. No pressure for picking the champions in next year. No, no like, pressure. <laughs> like, uh, like we were talking about Will Zalatoris, nobody had him. Cut. Everybody he had DJ. DJ. Yeah. He's so, on the cut line. If he can get this close. Watch him make this oh it'd be great Ooh, he put a good run at it okay so if he makes par on 17 and 18 he might still be there for the weekend don't hold off the jet what's what's his gal's name Paulina. Paulina. I was just like, Claudia. <laughs> well, you, you knew Paulina. that way no, too quick, oh, Ryan. Sorry, you just knew <laughs> that right I, don't, I knew Gretzky name. Paulina. Huh? Sorry, <laughs> I should say Gretzky. Keep shopping for the local fair in Augusta. I'm still on the cut line. We might be here for the weekend. No dice. He's loose. He's wild. So does this anyone want to know? I mean, I don't know how long we got here as a podcast. They're, they go... They go hours. They go 30 minutes. You can shut us off at any time. Yeah, I I, I don't know when you guys started. One of the things we need to make mention of, which is why this event's so special to me, is that Chip and I, I was a young college kid, sophomore, junior in college. I think I was a junior. I was working at ABC Rental. And at the time, believe it or not, you could rent a TV, literally a big box, get it in the back of your truck. It wouldn't fit it in the back seat of a car. Mm. Built in VCR. Yeah, built in VCR. How much? were they ten dollars a week twenty five dollars a month like that. <laughs> so you can rent a television and i'm a young kid started in august following april i've been there a bit and we had to in the back of the shop we had to clean up all the equipment get it ready to go back out on the shelf so that someone else could rent it so i'm in the back and it's sunday at augusta <laughs> it's noon on a sunday there's nobody in there and I've got the TV with the rabbit ears out and the tin foil. And if I get it just right and nobody comes through the door, I could see CBS Sports and Augusta. And this guy comes blowing through the door at Mach 2, like Chip always did. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to watch the Masters <laughs> when I'm on the clock. And he looks at me, and he's a little pissed. And then he looks at me and goes, is that the Masters? I go, Yeah. Who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we knew who was winning because that was the that was the uh, ninety six. Well, yeah, but that was the year the Norman Blues lead. I mean, everybody Follow. knew who was. That's, a, that's everybody we knew, knew who Norman was winning. Was winning. <laughs> he, he was about to go the other direction. Right. So we finished it at the Hideaway Lounge. Correct. Over a pork chop John sandwich, which those of you from Bozeman know. <laughs> pork chop John's, the Hideaway Lounge, Hideaway yeah. Liquors. Oh, yeah. We finished it there. And then the following year, Tiger went bonkers. So if you can put this all into perspective, 26 years, Tiger's career had started at Augusta. And when you see the the career that he has spanned and the, the position he's in now, you can understand that 26 years of watching this thing every April has been pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've played golf on two thirds of them. It's probably, probably fair. Most of them have occurred in Sheridan. I think we went to Bozeman two or three times. Yeah. yeah, the first, um, yeah there's only but been yeah, a couple. You, you, you set it on the calendar and you go, okay, Chip's going to show up in Sheridan on Friday and we're going to, we're going to smoke some meat. We're going to watch some, some golf. We're going to play a little golf, and it's the weather's indifferent. What's frankly, on the smoker this weekend? Chip brought us a brisket. I got I got pork chops tomorrow, tonight. Ooh. Tonight, pork chops. Ooh. Pork uh, chop sandwich? 
no pork chop sandwich. <laughs> my good Only buddy, at the hideaway. My good buddy Doug at the Ribbon Chop House picked, hooked me up with three porterhouse pork chops that are currently marinating in my fridge. That's tonight's meal. Tomorrow's probably going to be some sort of shotgun event between 36 holes and Midland Market or maybe Wings at the Pony or who knows what happens tomorrow. But it's going to be <laughs> put something in your gut so that you can make it to Sunday morning. And then we're going to smoke a brisket on on Sunday after. Oh, so outstanding. Back up. 26 years, we've been every drive to charity. Uh, He's only there, gone to Bozeman three times. There's been... Uh, um, <laughs> the, first, the first two or three. Fair the, question, Ty. Yeah, However, yeah. when Chip couldn't make it, I Jim immediately did. Yep. went north. There, there were a couple of times. I, I prefer to come down here or excuse to get out of town. Yeah. And um, it's to a great his food. lovely bride. And, 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 you yep. you get there. home it's cooking like from Lynette. Right, right. And it's we, a great and food we, he gets at the pony every year. And we got to play the powder right. horn a And lot. now you're complaining. But it didn't start out like like a lot of things. We never thought this there was going to be a streak and then after and then after four or five years because tim and i have a lot of things in common and i think one of them is we we appreciate and love tradition and uh, so we started this one and it's uh it's been ongoing um in 2013 i turned 50 and the monday of of my the week of my birthday or the, or the day of my birthday tim says go check your inbox and so I went and looked and he had put in for a raffle for a practice round at Augusta. And to, to keep it as short as possible through a, a mutual friend of ours who had connections with badges in Augusta, who was, who was in Atlanta for the final four, we turned the, pra the, the practice round on Monday, became the opening round on Thursday. Uh, and so we got to go together uh, in 2013. She was also 50 that year. Wow. So <laughs> that's a way to turn 50. It was. It was it's, it's, uh, and none of my family's listening. So it's the best birthday present I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was there in uh, 2010. Yes. Um, and it was actually with, you know, the controversy and whatnot. It was when Tiger came back. It was his first tournament back after all the stuff with his wife, you know, and whatever. That's beside the point. But it was, man. You know, yes, it's, it's cool. there, there's it's insane. Uh, you hear it all the time. You know, television doesn't do it justice, and, and it could it couldn't be more true. There's not a flat lie on that golf course. It exist, it's uh, and 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 the, the so when when DeChambeau says he has some up hills, some downhill, yeah, they all do yeah, right. all the time. Right. Every that's what they all have. <laughs> the thing that's the coolest about the Masters, in term, in, in my estimation of it, is the stuff that they don't tell you on TV. I mean, Jim Nance and CBS have been there for 35 years and everybody watches it on Sunday and they, they see how cool it looks. It's it, television as good as it does, doesn't do it justice. The, you, you don't get the elevation change. You don't get the undulation of the greens. There's, there's so much about it that you don't see on TV, but the, some of the cool stuff is, is like, it's still $3 for a, for a draft beer there. And, and when you walk up to the concession stand, they say, do you want to, I'll have a beer. They go, do you want a domestic or an import? I'm like, well, what's the domestic? As a brewery owner, I say, well, what's the domestic? They go, sir, it's a domestic beer. The girl at the counter has no idea what it is. And I go, okay, how about the import? She says, I have no idea. <laughs> it's an import beer. There is no advertisement. There is no promotion. There is nothing about the tournament that is is somehow disqualified or, or de-elevated based on the fact that it's a corporate sponsored right. deal that, that when I went back to the keg cooler in the back as, as only a brewery owner would do, I'm digging around these empty kegs and it smells horrible and there's rotten beer and it's been out in the sun at 95 degrees for three days. I go, Oh, the imports Heineken and the domestic is Miller high life, which mm. nobody would ever know. And it probably changed the following year. Right. But on that year, that was the domestic beer and that was the import. Well, and that, for three bucks, you got a 16 ounce beer in a souvenir mug for three dollars. Well, they, it's still they that do, way today. They do yeah. a lot of cool things with with it's 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 cola and light cola. It's 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 chips and barbecue chips. There's not a label on anything. Pimento cheese sandwiches. Yes. yes. How many pimentos did you guys have while you were there? I had no pimentos. Ooh, DJ's in the DJ's in the weeds again. So when I went, 
to, to, to your guys' points, I go in, you know, whatever, midday. Him, uh, I'm not a pimento fan, but Who is? sandwich, bag of chips, <laughs> and a beer. It was $4.50. Right. And the guy working the, working the register, not arrogant, not cocky, just matter of fact, comp- I, I asked her, I said, how do you guys do this? Like, and she goes, because we can. Yep. Yeah. And it's and it was again. It wasn't arrogant. It was just because this is the way it is. Eight hundred dollars for your tickets. And it's <laughs> and it's just, it is. It's the same way now. And when you go as far as like their apparel and the merchandise, you can't buy that logo anywhere but there. I mean, I'm sure somebody's selling on eBay, but the only place that's actually legal to sell it or, or licensed to sell it is there. Is there? And they don't the, gouge the coolest on that thing either. about it? No, they don't. No, no, no. Sure. Long sleeves, fifty, like it would be any, any place else. else. When the and Augusta National Board sits down at the end of 2021 and they, they sit around the group, the board sits down and they say, hey, did income exceed expenses? And the, and the chairman says yes. They say, okay, next question. It's that simple. Yep. <laughs> well, That's why they, they can. And they do the simple things like like all the wrappers are green, all the cups are green in case somebody loses one. You don't see trash on, on television. It's all it's all designed for television. The, the, every, everything that you buy there is is to keep the golf course clean and it, a piece of paper doesn't sit on that golf course for two minutes anyway before somebody runs out and puts a puts a stick in it and picks it up but it's a it's a fabulous and 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 it's the only major that's in the same place and as a traditional so that's the other thing that's always drawn it to me or drawn me to it we were just talking a second ago uh dj's ball in 16 today hits and and doesn't stay up on the ridge and it trickles down and, and just that would have been a great shot on Saturday for tomorrow and I said actually on Sunday that probably goes in the same ball on the same pin if the traditional Sunday pin probably goes in the hole I mean you right. saw where it landed right. yeah. if, if he's hitting that same shot on Sunday he's a, oh, a yeah. foot crowd's going nuts yeah it's, 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 there. it's just a it's a cool event with with incredible when you're there and you're you're a, a spectator you literally have a chair and you set it down where you want to sit and you can move it at, at your discretion, but you set it down and nobody sits in it. There's a bunch of guys walking around and if someone comes back and they're in your chair, they say, Hey, listen, that's this guy's chair. You're out and, and you move on. It's just a, everybody's orderly. Everybody is gracious. It's just an unbelievable place in golf. And it's it, like I said, it's, it's kind of the, the welcoming of spring and, and in 2021, it seems like a, a more prominent place than it is in, in previous years, but it's it's always cool. One note that I just looked through as I'm late looking through the leaderboard, Jose Maria Olathabel, plus two. Wow. Making the cut. cut. Not only made the cut, that dude is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I have to look what year he won, but it was well, a long I, time I ago. I can tell you it was 93 because Freddie won in 92 and Olathabel won the following year. That was that, his first one. Did he win twice? Yes. Yeah, on the too. list of guys. He won the Masters jackets. tournament in 94 and 99. And he made the cut in 2021. So crazy. Oh, my God. Earlier, I was listening to Phil's playing, Nicholson's playing Scheffler. Nicholson had played three Masters by the time Scheffler was born. <laughs> Real. <laughs> <laughs> and Scheffler's not the youngest guy out there. No. no. Like, not like Freddie Couples. Freddie, still, he, for some reason, this tournament, more times than not, he's like someone people are paying attention that's, that's the 30 thing 30 years of yeah. cuts in a row that's yeah. the thing about this 30 when, years when you look i was i was doing some math in my head there's seven guys who between them are 130 i mean the the guys who play well here play well here even at 40 even at 45, yeah, exactly even at 55 they, they, they just continue to play good. you know one of the coolest things about the masters in my mind is the the lack of sponsorship these guys the membership at Augusta National and the the board and its it, its entire organization says we're not in this thing for for what the corporate dollars are. They have they've had traditionally two to three sponsors, Cadillac and Travelers for a long time, and I think AT and T is a sponsor now. I, so. uh, I don't believe Cadillac is any longer, but they they also have the Drive Chip and Putt, which is a big junior event. But they 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 don't. It's not about how many dollars can we roll into Augusta National. 
they only have two minutes of of, te- of commercials, commercials every hour. hour. At 58 minutes of coverage and two minutes of commercials. You know, they've been given pressure by other organizations to try and do certain things. And they've never, they, one year that they were going to say, well, we're going to put a bunch of pressure on your sponsors. And uh, they said, you know what? That's fair. We're not, we don't want that on our sponsors. So this year, we're no not going to have sponsors. <laughs> yes. Nope. 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 Said, you yeah. know what? This year yeah. we'll have 60 minutes of uninterrupted coverage. Every hour. You, can, you can download the Masters app. Yeah. You, you can pick any player in the field, click on them, and you can pick, go to their scorecard and watch every single shot. Oh, yeah. It's all filmed it, and put onto the, like, in real time onto the app. It's just amazing. Like, as a golf fan, pretty amazing coverage. You know? Yeah. Great. It's the toughest ticket in sports, but if you ever have a chance to go, you have to go. You know, and I had a buddy, I said, man, I don't know what this is going to cost. And he said, look, just put it all on a card. When you come home, you look at it and you go, yep, that's what it costs to go to Augusta. And and if somebody would have said, I don't know, it's going to be this much, would you say no? The answer is no, I still would have gone. So (laughs) it doesn't matter what the number is. You guys started watching when Tiger won uh, or watching together. Are you guys Tiger fans? Oh, that's such a baited question. <laughs> he's he's it's a ar- fair question. Ar- arguably the greatest. Are you Tiger ar- 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 Arguably the greatest golfer of all time. Absolutely. And and there are times when I will root for him. <laughs> so you're not a fan just at times. There's guys I like better. How about let's put it like that? <laughs> that is as that is as gracious an answer. Wow, as ever was that political? In 26 wow. years, of are you this. trying to get a job somewhere? <laughs> that is as I, gracious I, I, a response I've ever heard. I, I, I like him. I like him way more now. I, I mean, I, I, yes. I, I uh, um, there, there's a graciousness about this game that I I don't think he exhibited. At, at, at a time and that's one of the things that rubbed me the wrong way and he's not the only one mind you um and and this game is humbling and life is humbling and and when he when he came back i he's good for golf when he came back it was good for golf and, and when he won i was good for tiger we cheered for him we, the year yeah he won. the year I, he won yeah i think that's like asking after this last super bowl if you're a tom brady fan like i don't think you can say like, I mean, you could say, yeah, no, but like you still respect no, the game, say, no. right? I would say, but no. you respect, you got to respect the skill though, right? To yeah, come from somewhere him. else. <laughs> Listen, Zach, as a Bobcat, you, you have to understand no one should have that much. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no human being should have that much, <laughs> but you respect the skill, yeah. right? Beautiful wow. wife, great kids. I mean, I know seven Super Bowls, <laughs> unbelievable. Well, should anyone have that much? Uh, I, sure. I don't it's know. It's America. You got to respect America. There you go. There you go. Yeah. If I needed, if I needed somebody to make a putt for my life, I call on Tiger, and I don't even. And it's not even a twenty footer. Tom a, Brady would be second. I'd have, yeah, yeah. He's got that much luck. He'd probably yeah, go yeah. in. No, he's not even a good golfer. I watched him last year, and he was horrible. But oh, he's yeah. clutch. He might make yeah, that. He, putt. Yeah, he'd come in. It's true. You know, you notice that that Tim laid off that question one hundred percent. He didn't though. even say anything. I got no, nothing I, out of Tim. Yeah, he's, he's, the one the Tiger the, Woods. Tiger. You're a fan. Are you a fan of Tiger? You got to the microphone so fast, oh. <laughs> I couldn't stop. <laughs> it was it was a relief. DJ <laughs> for birdie on seventeen. I'm not a Tiger fan. I'm respectful no. of of his re- accomplishments. I yeah, think yeah. that his place in the game is above anyone else's. I, I was that I was that way when he was 23 and new on the tour. I I was never lo- it was never lost on me that he was the game's next great player and he exceeded everyone's expectations. But there were guys that came before him. Bobby Jones, Ben Hogan, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicklaus that carried the torch as the game's ambassador in a far greater fashion, in a far more gracious fashion than Tiger chose to carry it. And that doesn't mean he's a bad dude, but there were guys that meant more to the game because of what they meant to the game than Tiger did. And he was great. Yeah. And those guys like Hogan, who has the Hogan Bridge on England Corner. Well done. Played for, you can't even, the, the amount of money Hogan made in his whole career, Tiger made him eight, playing 25th in one 2006. Turn. He made making a cut in the first one. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. No, guys like Arnold Palmer never had a bad day. 
they they were always they, they had terrible days, but nobody ever knew. When Tiger had a bad day, everybody yeah. knew. Don't talk to me. Get the hell out of the way. I'm not doing interviews. And, and, and Art of Palmer the didn't, wasn't given that luxury. Yeah. He was there. And when when they asked the top 100 all time, if Arnold Palmer asked for 25 cents of every dollar you made, would you give it to him? And, and, I, like and, and 99 and of them said, said yes. yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, th- he, he's the one who made the tour what the tour is. Arnold, right. Arnold did. Conversely, Payne Stewart dies in a terrible car crash the week before the airplane airplane sorry airplane accident the week before the tour championship and 31 guys out of 32 go out and wear plus fours as a tribute and tiger says nike couldn't get him to me this is one of the the world's greatest conglomerate organizations and you don't think that nike couldn't put a swoosh on a set of plus fours to put on him to sell a million pairs or nike wasn't good enough to say we don't give a shit if you don't wear nike today correct yeah. let it go red for tiger correct his damn all leg. those guys <laughs> all those guys point. the following year at the u.s open hit balls into the ocean at pebble beach except one because he couldn't miss his 8 10 tea time Tiger Woods. I take for, nothing for, away from what he accomplished, but as an ambassador to the game, as one of its great players, he was inferior to Arnold Palmer and Bobby Jones and but, Jack Nicholas. But, but he is he has come back. He has he totally. Has. I mean, like I he's said, far he's far more human he's, now. And and that's what well, that, but makes him likable. 2009. Yeah. He was humanized. Yes, yeah. and, and and it made him likable. And 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 in in, in in fairness, he he, he embraced that. He did. That's a good. That's a great I was, point. Again, I was there in ten. His first turn up back. Up until that point, he wasn't shaking hands, you know, going saying hi to the kids ever. Right. What was he doing that whole weekend? Yep. And and he, but he hasn't stopped either since then. So, he he yeah. won one major since the car accident that he had with the fire hydrant yep. and Elin and all the stuff that followed it. I've enjoyed his career more since that moment than I did previously. Yep. R- rooted for him since then. Yeah. Rooted for him. Yeah. That, uh, I got to go take care of something before five. Thanks Ooh. for the invite. Yeah, of course. Boys. Swinging, Appreciate swinging it. big deals. Um, it was good talking to you guys. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you for joining Jess. us. We would never want to stand in the way of a closing. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's see <laughs> He's out. He's out. He's out. Ooh, we got, we got Aaron Gray coming back He's in. Coming we got back. an open mic. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Gray is back to the set. You can even have Jess's beer right here. <laughs> we, we can get you a fresh one. I know a couple of gals in here. You can hook us up. Bam. I want to say as a I, the Tom Brady talk um, or Super Bowl, just uh, as a 49ers fan, I was just like, ah, you guys were killing me over here. Yeah, they, were killing, they were killing me too. I'm sorry. That's what I excuse myself. You guys talked about Tom Brady. I'm glad I picked the right time. Yeah, I stepped out at the right. We time. did cover uh, Tom Brady. Jess, who just left myself, or I was way off golf. We're both Raiders fans. So, oh, any, oh, any Raiders I'm, fan has I'm a deep, deep hatred for Tom Tough Rule Brady. <laughs> Tough Rule Brady. It won't, it won't matter. <laughs> he stood up there at the podium with a big shitty grin on his face and said, "Oh yeah, I fumbled it." We were like, "You're a nose <laughs> so, You might have to explain this Tough Rule thing uh, for everybody too young for that. that. <laughs> it basically lost the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. Raiders had the game in the bag. Charles Woodson just got inducted to the Hall of Fame. Comes around the corner, hits Brady, hits his arm, knocks the ball out. It was ruled an incomplete pass. Golf update. Is he yeah. going to make it? Board, no, board he's board. not. He's DJ be, just try. missed that par putt. He is four over and in trouble going he's into 18. Got to make birdie at 18. Got to make home. birdie at 18 to make it. So, so Ryan, when when you were a pro back, when Tiger was at, what did you see that do to the game when he became oh, popular? I, it was Explode. it was all it was the total difference in the it was the world to golf because that's when the that's when the that's when everybody built golf courses. Uh, I went to school to be a golf pro because uh, I was in in school in ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. That's I mean. Golf courses were being built, and you couldn't be a golf pro fast enough. And when you came out, 100% 
job. You you were getting a job. It was just a matter of where you wanted to go. There were golf courses being built everywhere. And it was all because of Tiger. So I was a Tiger fan then because I was young and I was riding coattail. I mean, I was one of the millions riding coattails. In he the golf also industry. shot 67 at the Yellowstone Open one year. So he is a pretty good player too. At Cottonwood. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you're a tin cup fan, I could keep going, but I won't. <laughs> Did, did you see a lot of people flood to want to learn how to play the game, though, I guess is what I meant? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. A lot of people play the game, learn to play. The, the game grew uh, probably pretty steady until 2007, 2008. Pace so, of play slowed. Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of newbies, <laughs> which was great as a golf pro. Like, you know, line them up. Let's learn how to play golf. It was it was excellent. But, uh, but, but no, he was the huge difference to the whole game and Arnold was probably the guy that made the tour what it was and and, and certainly uh, popularized golf but but Tiger was Tiger changed modern golf and and added certainly. so many golf courses certainly. to the world and and we're watch we think that the Masters is the greatest thing on television because of the money that Tiger's brought to the tour and, and, and Tiger brought the same amount of growth and wealth to the right. to the tour that, that Arnold Palmer did. And, I mean, and if you look at these young... different, but... DJ to get yeah. that yeah. 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 DJ you, just went in the trouble. bunker. Yeah. You look at the young guys though on tour. I mean, Tiger was their hero growing up. I mean, Zander, every one of those you know, guys. Every, yeah, Max all those Homa, guys. Yes. when he won earlier at Riviera. Oh, yeah, he was so excited. He would basically peed his pants on the 18th green when because, Tiger came down yeah, to give him the trumpet. Yeah, they, man, they were... They were all they were all Tiger guys growing up the way we were Jack or whoever that whoever the dominant golfer you ever was. Yes. Hey, by the way, I want to make mention that Brian Harmon is minus six and in tied for second right now. He plays from the wrong side of the ball. Hey, How listen, the hell did that happen? Listen, he's five four and he puts light lights out. I love him. He's like a young Tim Barnes. He's like four. <laughs> just a better Tim Barnes. He can't get it out of his shadow. But you walk to the clubhouse and you go. You throw your hat down on a table after the Yellowstone Pro Am, and you go, "Do you know what you shot?" I said, "Yes, I shot 81." He go, "I shot 81. How the hell did that happen?" I hit it all over the countryside. He Didn't talked. He, there's eight. There's 14 tee shots that you have with a driver in uh, Yellowstone and Billings. He topped 12 of the 14. <laughs> And just, just like a, just dead to, topped him like cold 50 topper, yards, cold top 50 yards. But he has the greatest three wood in the history of the Yellowstone chapter <laughs> pro am because he hit every three wood to about either on the green or right next to the green, got up and down, made par over and over and over. And I kept thinking he was playing terrible because he topped every tee shot. So we get to the clubhouse and the golf pro that you're playing with and Ryan's at, at this time a PGA pro and he t- tallies up our score because he's got to give him the card and he looks at me and he says do you know who you shot? I said yeah, 81. And he throws his visor down on the table. Whack! And he goes, that's what I shot. I said, well, I, I made a lot of, I hit a lot of good three woods. Oh, <laughs> he was so over mad. And over. Well, he would have hit the three wood off the tee box. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have shot 65. He'd have been, he'd be playing on TV instead of this podcast right now. Still one of my favorite golf moments over the last 30 years. I'm, I'm still biting my tongue over the fact he's mocking that guy for being 5'4". I, I just as so much I could say. Oh. I'm just sitting okay, on Can we start thinking, the short jokes yeah. now? Listen, let's buddy just go Lee. to let's, Listen, let's Buddy start. Lee. It's not quite like that. Remember Buddy Lee from the Lee jeans commercials? There's a little bitty dude. No. Chip is Buddy Lee. Oh, again, <laughs> no, my so material being Jim stolen. <laughs> No. no. Did you not see that? We were, no. we, we were watching. Yeah. We were wondering if he broke a putter. Who? Fully, who? Single team. Kim. Like they showed like three or four shots in, in the Masters today putting with like a hybrid. Really? Maybe he's tin cup and he's proving a point. Like I never miss hit the three wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he, he picked, he picked Augusta to make that point. <laughs> He's not making the cut. Yeah. Did we yeah. talk about uh, beginners coming to Kendrick? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. We, we covered. Right. Yep. We All covered right. that. Look, solid okay. golf lessons. Out cool. Because then we'll go back to Tiger. Because they're talking about Tiger. <laughs> I remember. Was it three years ago that he rewon the Masters? Tiger. Twenty nineteen. Two, 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 two years. Two years ago. Two years ago. Because um, we were just talking about like 
probably the greatest of all time. I've never watched the Masters before until that year. And I was like, man, there is no, I don't know if you can top an athlete that like just brings the attention in person because they had that crowd following them. And then me, like I've never watched the Masters and I'm like watching Tiger win that one in 2019. Um, you want to talk about an athlete that just generates talk. When he won the, the tour championship at East Lake, which is again, Bobby Jones's home course. And all those fans rushed the fairway, and he, and, the, he and Rory, was, yeah, he and Rory crazy. were trying to navigate the crowd. It was one of the most incredible moments yeah. in golf. And Rory gets to the green, and you can see his face is like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. <laughs> he barely got out of that. It was unbelievable. Uh, Such a spontaneous moment, yeah, oh, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You don't see that in, in the seventies, uh, in the sixties and seventies. You would see him come down eighteen, and they'd enclose around the fairway and then go around the 18th green. And that was pretty standard practice. That doesn't happen anymore. And and, and no. Tiger goes out and and is winning, going to win this golf tournament. And the people are so overcome with emotion. They want to be there. And they and they no. crash the I, ropes I would, I would and crash qualify, the security. I would qualify Tiger's career as being the greatest of all time because I don't believe there was a player that played with more pressure than Tiger did, whether it was fans, galleries, proximity, media coverage, social media, television. I don't believe anybody in sports have has witnessed the scrutiny on their performance and they're and they're outside of the field or or golf course life the way Tiger did. No. Yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, to your point, Ryan, on that is it, it's just another example. America loves to come back. Yeah, I mean, you talk about like... I mean, America Logan just loves to come back. Yeah, yeah. loves the secrets. underdogs. And, like, and, and the see Tiger come back was great. Only brought into light and books were written in the last 10, 12 years. That would have never happened. Like, you would have known every aspect of his life. Oh, yeah. 50 years ago. For sure. And ha would he have had the same mental fortitude? Did he just leave that in the bunker? He left it short of the bunker, actually. It didn't even make the bunker. So this has got to go in. This chip shot over a bunker to an elevated green has to go in to well, make the out. cut. Ooh, when Xander started to sneak around. Do you guys love the Masters, those of you? Oh. That the Gobi Wilding folks who we appreciate. <laughs> yeah. Do you love? Do you love the Masters suddenly? Like, like Daniel, Daniel Berger. Daniel Berger plus Pebble? three. He he had to make that. He's oh, now yeah. on the cut line playing 18. Got to make par to make the cut. Like it I almost said, looks unnatural on television. Yeah. It looks even crazier in person. Have you been in person? Yes. Chip and I uh, went. We we, yeah. And Jess, okay. who Jess yep. was here earlier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Too. Yep. I noticed one of the things they've done this year in the coverage is show the elevation changes on television oh, yeah. yesterday. And they say it's, when you're it's at a the clubhouse, foot or 20, they've never done that before. When you're at knowledge. the clubhouse it's pretty, it's and you cool. lock down 10, yeah. it's all downhill. I mean, like steeply downhill. And then you get to the 11th tee and you go downhill again, the same <laughs> steep. And then you go to 12 and it's downhill. And then 13 is downhill. When you get to 14 tee box on the 13th green, you are literally as close to hell as you can get. <laughs> it is so hot. It is so hot. There's and no so wind, far downhill. No breeze. And not a breath of air. I don't know how they keep grass alive, let alone the azaleas back there. But it's it, you, you, there's probably, what do you think? I mean, I, I'm trying to be realistic here. Do you think there's 250 feet of elevation from, between from, the clubhouse to the 13th green? Probably. I mean, they're showing 50 and 60 foot elevation changes I, in, actually, from hole to hole. They showed earlier, I think, like it's, 75 feet or something. It's ridiculous oh. how far down to the 13th green. And then and then it's all back uphill. Yeah, you, you get down there, get you better have made some birdies because it's tough <laughs> coming back. Well, and high, high definition certainly helps show a lot of the hills that you could never see on on the TV that we watched our first one together on, where it was just green. And just the big look, box, the just, square. Yeah, just looking at this now, you can see the little undulations and stuff, and that that, that certainly helps. So this has to go That's in. That's got to go in, in or he's out. Oh! It's got to spin back. Tried to dunk Down it. Downhill. Tried Here to hoop it in there. Coming back. Tried to hoop it. Chipper comes with a <laughs> hooper. <laughs> Chip coming with a hooper. He's out. Whoa. DJ, jump DJ. on the plane. Um, Grab Paulina. Paulina, you're out of we're here. headed. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next event? He's taking a couple they, weeks they off, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got enough cash in the savings he account. He's going to take a couple hey, weeks Paulina, off. We're going to have a couple weeks on the beach. And then where's the U.S. Open this year? I think it's... Uh, 
Oh, uh, great question. No, it's in New York. Westchester. Hey, look at me. Uh, back to back years in New York. It's back in New York. I'm, is that Pauline and Gretzky? Yeah. Yes. Gretzky. Oh, yeah. Gretzky. <laughs> DJ's done well. I was going to say, yeah. He can DJ take- makes a lot of money. <laughs> he plays a lot of good golf. Wayne did well. He yeah. married well. Yes. Yeah. Nobody's worried about DJ getting on the wheels up flight and being able to pay for it when he lands. Yeah. No. It's never a Worried about wheels down. <laughs> Tory Pines. Tory Pines, Sorry, not, not New York. Other Tory coast. Pines. Other coast. The other way. I was close. I'm- do you think Tiger comes back by Tory? I mean, he won there. No, no, he's out. Does no, Tiger he won't win play again. in twenty twenty one? Does Tiger win again? Tiger play? Does Tiger play again first? That's what I was going to say. Does he play? I mean, again? his his injuries. He does not. I don't think he injuries, does win again. His injuries are severe. I mean, yeah. if he plays again, I mean, I don't know if he'll be on this tour or the or the or the senior. But how old is he? Because like, does he forty play- six? Six. Oh, he can still play, I guess, depending on his. What's How next bad? for Gobi, Wyoming? We, we've talked a lot about us. Yeah. What's, What's next? next for Gobi, Wyoming? What is next? Ribbon cutting tomorrow. Ribbon Ooh. cutting, yeah. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's that at? At, at the morning, office? I thought at the studio, yeah. Great. Right. It's a little yeah. early. Yeah. 9 a.m. <laughs> 9 a.m., yeah. <laughs> We're going to be making the turn at Buffalo National. Yep. <laughs> Jeff Rafferty's going to be saying, hey, let's get this thing going. You got guys behind you. The legends <laughs> of golf. The, going the legends. Going. You're in front of the legends. I got I got the world behind you, Barnes. <laughs> We've got uh, to- um, uh, Brienne. I don't know what her last name is. Saddle Tramp. Um, Brienne Saddle Tramp. Uh, Brienne you, know, you know Brienne. She comes in here all the time. <laughs> I do. We got We just recorded an episode with uh, Wild Rodeo yeah, Royalty. Yeah, talked about that. Uh, so the, oh, Tom Balding's next week. Yeah, yep. like, who's next week? Tom yeah, Absolutely. Tom Balding. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we got a good summer lineup coming. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, Tim, you got new beers coming this summer. Yeah. We got lots out? of new beers. So uh, about that. Curly Quick Draws the seasonal, and it's a hazy IPA. We had it last year. It's better this year than last year. We're we're, we're tired of using two and three year old hops, so we've got some fresher stuff. That it's it's part of the, it's the nature of this business. You you contract for what you think you need, and then you realize that's not how many hops you needed, and you got to figure out how to get through them. So previous versions of this beer, you could mask some some hops that were maybe not quite as fresh as you'd like to use, but we're using 2021 crop year hops in Quick Draw this year. It's in, in, incredibly better than what it was in years past. Uh, we've got a, a guide boat, Goza, which is our summer seasonal coming June 1st. Um, it's got orange and lemon and lime in it. It'll be a great summer, easy drinking beer. A um, couple other items in the works, uh, things that, that we'll, we'll announce soon, uh, probably around the 4th of July. we got a new beer coming. Um, the last time I was on this podcast, and it might be a hair premature, but because you waited for me the first time, <laughs> I'm going to give you the opportunity for the announcement that we are going to Casper. Okay. Uh, we're opening a Casper tap room probably October or November uh, of 2021 where we've got a, a great relationship with the group that's doing that entire development downtown. It's right next to David street station. It's, it's on David street. Um, it's a, it's a cool project and in a really a much larger project than just a black tooth tap room. They've got a bunch of townhomes going in and a lot of commercial development. Uh, the, the, the uh, family that's doing that is a longtime Casper family and a legendary Wyoming family. And they've got a, a really cool mission to try and build a Casper that's that's better than the Casper today. Uh, not that Casper's bad today. It's a great place. But they, they, they've got a really cool vision and a really clear vision. And we're excited to be a part of that. So uh, we'll have a third location, hopefully, before the end of the year. Awesome. Heard that here first. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's true. If you've ever if you've ever been to David Street Station, it's a that's a like that can be a really cool area. So with you guys moving down there, um, you've got it worked out to where you know if there's a concert going on, Blacktooth's right there. So it's going to be a really cool venue and really cool place. For yeah, Casper. you know I, that was never the model or the vision. We 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 picked this location in Sheridan because it was the right space. It was enough space. 
there was some room to move. There was, there was, yep. you know, an opportunity to expand, uh, but it was really kind of a slower volume. I wouldn't say rundown, but certainly not the, the thoroughfare that Broadway has become for downtown Sheridan. We did the same thing in Cheyenne. The West Edge is a really cool development, and we were excited to be a part of that. We bought the right piece of property there, primarily because it looked exactly like Black Tooth looks in Sheridan. Yeah. Same 45-degree angle, old car dealership. Nothing about that property didn't say exactly what Black Tooth says in Sheridan. And then because of those two locations and because of their proximity, like I said earlier, 320 miles apart, the folks in Casper approached us and said, hey, we want to see something like this take place in Casper the way it's taken place in Sheridan and the way it's taken place in Cheyenne. And we would be interested in, in whether or not you guys had an option or an opportunity to join us in this development. And um, it, we're flattered to be a part of it. They're a great group and and uh, they've given us a lot of latitude in terms of what the space will look like and in terms of, of how we make it successful for Blacktooth. So um, I, I'm really excited about yeah. Casper and it, it kind of completes us as a Wyoming brand and, and the I-25 corridor. Uh, we, we didn't really care about what it looked like outside of Wyoming. We wanted to be Wyoming's beer first and a lot of what we're doing lately is about trying to be central to Wyoming and that's that's who we are and, and hopefully the, the Casper location lends to that as well. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's exciting. Maybe another <laughs> I, live event in the fall. Right? I told you <laughs> I, I did I couldn't announce it yet. That was what four or five months ago. Yep. And now yeah, here I am. Here we are. Still in the beans on yeah. Wyoming. There we go. Love it. Just go be Wyoming and start to travel now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know it. Grand opening. Yep. Casper. We'll be there. There we go. If there's beer there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> What else you got? We, you guys have given us plenty of plenty time. time. I mean, this is a, we're working you know, on a two-hour podcast. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you got a hot tub to hook up. Yeah, there you go. Hey, so we're all going there. I got Wings there. Celebrity yeah. hot tub. Yeah, yeah. Tim Brooks. <laughs> James Brown will be there. Yeah. Tim Barnes will be there. <laughs> James Brown will be there. Yeah, Murphy has. <laughs> the lovely Amanda Bach will be there. You'll have wings and pimento cheese. No pimento cheese. <laughs> <laughs> bourbon? Will there be bourbon? Definitely. Like yeah, bourbon. Yeah, yeah. Definitely bourbon. <laughs> That's no, a good trade. Right. Cigars. I mean, the weather's Ooh, improving. It looks like cigars. it warms up every bourbon minute. Cigars. Like yeah. It is nice. Yeah. 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 That'll be awesome. Other, no, other than our interviews, you know, we're open to doing more live events like this. You know, you guys kind of approached us of, hey, this would be a cool. You guys love talking golf. You know, we obviously love the Black Tooth beer. Um, so if anyone out there wants to run some sort of live event, you know, uh, through their social media, um, and then obviously we'll record this as a podcast and, um, you know, we're open to doing that more. So, I mean, we've got a studio, we're a full, uh, full audio visual team. So, um, any sort of, and it, it doesn't have to be something like this where it's shooting the, shooting the crap. Um, we've approached like museums, like, Hey, let's do some yep. historical stuff. You sure. know, let's, let's get serious. You know, we can do that kind of yep. stuff too. Um, I know Zach, I don't know if Zach announced it, but he'll be a sixth grade teacher here. So. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Best news of the day. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good yep. for you. Do you have school? Uh, yep. But you're at junior yep. high. This year in junior awesome. high. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's all about the history. So yeah, we're, yeah. we're all, so that's, that's where we're going. We're, we're trying to be, uh, try and be as big as black tooth. That's our, that's our goal. <laughs> so, right. Try and shoot for something that's much higher. higher. No, 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 that's a high bar. That's a high bar. He's already picking up the tab. You don't have to. Oh, there's my good buddy coming in. Chip's picking up the tab. Yeah, there there's a the tab rolling. It won't let me out of here if it's not paid. And I don't have a card. Oh yeah, you do. No, I don't. You have credit. I, yeah, I, I sign their the card, checks. You but look at the statement tomorrow. Tab. That's what it costs to do a podcast. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Right. Yeah. That guy, Ty Bob. Well, As, we appreciate you guys coming well, in here. Well, I love you what you guys are doing. I think it's awesome. And, and anytime, if you need to use this space, if it if it works for your event, whether it includes black tooth or not, don't don't sweat it. Let awesome. me know. This stage is open. 99% of the time, the time. So, all right, you're you gonna it. be on on site. I mean, like, 
people are gonna be yep. looking at you crazy. Yep. What are they doing tag, up there? Tag, yep. We're Bring some cards. Yep. Throw out some stickers. I, I, I need one of those on our sticker pole. I'm gonna leave. I'm just gonna leave all these. <laughs> <out here. laughs> well, when, when, and then last for Ryan, anything else you want to say for Gendry Golf Course before we kind of wrap this up? No, nope, not a whole lot that I haven't already said. But come out Perfect. and enjoy us. The golf course is in great shape. All golf courses, Buffalo, Sheridan, here in Sheridan, Buffalo, um, uh, Hidden, Bridge. Hidden Bridge, and the Powderhorn. We're all in great shape. Go play golf. Enjoy the nice weather. Get outside. That's all we ask. And uh, come out and have a great time. Awesome. Love come it. up and check out the new paint job at the uh, yeah. Kendrick. In the bar. The K Club. In the bar. At we the can't, K Club. We can't officially Short call it the K Club because no. that's a really cool. Is it, is it in Europe? Uh, yeah. It, yep. Yep. It's a European yep. golf club. British. The K, the, the, the K Club. K Club, but we're, we're not course. officially the K Club, but it's you can also, certainly shorten it to It's that. also mm -hmm. the home of the Chucker. Can we spell that with a K? <laughs> the Cucker? <laughs> Chucker. Chucker. C H K K. There you go. U K. Yeah. You got to put the U. U K K. U K K. The Chucker. A R. It's like the Chucker Chuck bird. Yeah. Isn't it spelled a K? Yeah. So at some place there's a K. Chucker. <laughs> Chips and English major, you gotta watch it. I don't know how many cases. He's spelling however we want. It's ours. Yeah. Sneaky. Yeah. Full um, English breakfast type of chuck. <laughs> I did want to tell uh, Zach, you and Aaron, uh, when when Tim yeah. asked me if I wanted to be on the podcast, he said sure, and I listened to a few of you guys. You're doing fabulous work. Oh, thank you. So we appreciate. Really, really that. I've got you guys subscribed and a couple more subscribers. So best of luck to you guys. Thanks so much. We appreciate that. <laughs> Is that a rap or do we want to do another one? <laughs> <laughs>